Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown here. Today, I wanted to discuss the Parker Mountain Machine 43 and 43X compensator. All right, before we get started, please like this video. If you enjoy this video, comment down below if you have any questions or comments. I read almost 100% of them at this point. Uh, in fact, a lot of your comments actually turn into video ideas. If you do have any recommendations or video ideas you'd like for me to make or you want to hear my opinion on something, like I said, comment down below and I will either respond there or make a video with my objectively correct opinions. Um, subscribe if you enjoy my channel. All right, so the Parker Mountain Machine 43X, 48, and 43 Barrel Combo. Compensators on pistols. Compensators are going to be a greater discussion that I'm going to have a dedicated review on sometime in the near future. That being said, today's video is going to be focused on, once again, the Micro JTTC combo for slimline Glock pistols. The first question you may have is, why would you add a compensator to a everyday carry firearm. Well, it's simple. I want to be as effective with the tool as possible. A compensator reducing recoil by 30, 40, 50% with hot ammo can increase your follow your accuracy as well as your um, tempo with follow-up shots. It can make tracking the dot more easy during recoil. Um, as well as having every advantage you can have in a self-defense situation is something that is infinitely beneficial to not only me, but should also be for you. Um, downsides of compensators on pistols. Well, there's a couple. In fact, that's kind of how compensators are judged, right? We all know that compensators are great. We put compensators on our rifles. Why shouldn't we put them on our pistols? The issue there is compensators on rifles rarely, if ever, cause reliability issues, whereas compensators on pistols can be a little bit more finicky. Okay, so what are the downsides of putting a compensator on your pistol? Well, the aforementioned reliability, and that's what we're going to be talking about mostly today. Secondly, the flash that can be created by said compensator. And third, which is another uh, detractor for this product, is absolutely the price. Um, fourth, form factor. The first one, reliability. How has my reliability been with this combo? Well, if you watch my Palmetto State Armory 15 round mag reviews, you'll see that I had a couple very minor reliability issues. Um, those included a, I had a single stove pipe with, or rather a failure to feed, my apologies, um, with a Palmetto State Arm 15 round mag, um, as well as the JTTC's JTTC compensator. Now, which one was which? I'm unable to say because I have not been able to replicate it. That's good news. So we have one failure to feed the round into the chamber. Not great, but not reclable. All right, the second issue I had was mag lockback. Now, mag lockback is, uh, I'd say, significantly less important than a failure to feed. However, it's important nonetheless. Um, using the Palmetto State Arm 15 round micro magazines, I did have a couple instances of the second magazine not locking back. Okay. When I then put the magazine in the firearm and pull the slide back multiple times without any rounds in the chamber or mag, guess what? The follower was not allowing that lockback. So do I think it's the compensator? No. Did I go to the range and test a normal 43X slide as well as Glock OEM mags? Yes. What were those results? Well, I wasn't able to replicate it. So what can we ascertain by that? We can deduce that these issues may have been one-off issues. Uh, potentially, I want to blame the magazine, which I love these PSA mags. I'm actually going to be having another video on them very shortly because I am so impressed. However, 
I chalk these reliability issues up to the magazine. Okay. Now, the second topic of discussion is going to be Flash, created by said compensator during heavy strings of fire, um, potentially under night vision. Well, I'm not able to test it under night vision. That is one area where I'm not able to give you guys verifiable information in video form, picture form. You're going to have to take my word on it. Um, I actually haven't shot this under night vision. This is a EDC firearm. Um, and if you look up videos online, Sage Dynamics is an absolutely phenomenal reviewer. You can find this exact topic is actually covered by him, where he shows that it's really a non-issue. So not only will this 43X not really be under nods to begin with, not that it couldn't be, it absolutely could, but it's really a non-issue. Um, if you guys have night vision and you look at a bright object just for a nanosecond, it's not going to completely destroy your, your tube, or it's not going to destroy the image that's projected back to you. Modern night vision has something called auto-gating. What auto-gating does is when there is a bright light or you're staring at a bright light, it is going to dim the tube, for lack of a better word. So what's going to happen is you're not going to burn out your night vision like older tubes, Gen 1 tubes, could potentially have that issue. Okay. The other topic of discussion is going to be shooting from retention. Um, people assume that in a self-defense situation, they're going to be John Wick. They're going to pull their pistol out from their appendix carrier four o'clock and kind of do that maneuver where they shoot kind of from like the hip or from like their like crotch level. Um, and that's not completely unrealistic, but I feel like people put a lot of focus on that, which... Uh, you guys can go on Live League and see self-defense shootings. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that. But anyway, it's something to be aware of. So I guess I understand the concern. Um, doing that with a compensator, people say it's going to fling uh, carbon, smoke, pressure up at your face or at your chest or at your shirt. Um, I actually have tested this. I don't have video of doing so. Maybe I'll do that in the future. But I have tested this as well as the Sage Dynamics video does cover this topic. It's really not an issue. Um, I implore you guys, if you do have breaks, to go to the range and shoot said break really close to your body. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to feel a little bit of, of, of pressure in the direction of where that compensator is facing, right? So your face or your chin, rather. You might actually get some little... Uh, uh, you might feel like pebbles hit you. Um, but once again, I don't consider this an issue whatsoever because it's not grounded in realism as well as even if it were to be realistic, it's still not something I consider an issue. Okay, the third topic of discussion is going to be holster availability and form factor. Now, my 43X build has gone through quite a metamorphosis over time, right? The 43X is designed to be a slimline, small pistol. Mine is quote unquote, Rolanded out. Um, and that's because I care a lot more about the practicality of the firearm in different senses of the word. Even though it's a slimline pistol and I get the benefits of it being slimline, I want a light so I can properly identify my target. I want a red dot so I can shoot with both eyes open and have an accurate first focal plane, I guess is probably the right word, uh, shooting experience, right? A compensator is no different. A compensator gives me capability. In other words, it's almost like the term a force multiplier, right? What a force multiplier is, is it is uh, taking an object Let's just, and this is a weird example, but taking an object, adding something to it, um, let's say adding like a night vision device to your rifle, and that is a force multiplier. It gives you capability to do something that most people or most rifles wouldn't be able to do, okay? I almost consider a compensator in that category. A compensator making my pistol 50% faster to shoot or easier to shoot, um, I consider to be a force multiplier. It brings my slimline 43x firearm 
from a firearm that is just meant to be concealed carried and shot at short distances. Uh, I now put a TLR7 sub, an RMRCC, and a PMM comp on it. And in my opinion, I've turned it into a, once again, a multiplication of force, a firearm that is a greater than, um, or the greater than the sum of its parts, right? It turns into a build that is extremely controllable while offering me the benefits of said red dot and that TLR7. Okay, let's talk about the shooting experience. This is what's really important here. The website claims to have, if I'm remembering correctly, a 30-40% reduction in recoil, maybe more. Do I find that to be the case? Uh, yes, I actually have a 43X slide that I threw on here just to make sure I wasn't crazy and I didn't have my nostalgia or red tinted glasses on, okay? Um, shooting a 43X with an RMR, my dot will leave the window. With a red dot, it's really easy to see your deficiencies as a shooter, okay? If a red dot is always presenting in the lower left, you know that your presentation is bad. If a red dot is leaving the window, you know that your recoil control is poor, or your firearm is just so small that you can't keep it within that window. I can't keep a red dot on an RMR within the window of a 43X. I can't. I consider myself a decent shooter, and it just can't be done, at least by me. The PMM comp, I will say about uh, under heavy strings of fire, I am able to keep the dot within the tiny RMR window. I would say it actually almost barely exceeds the window sometimes. It's kind of like a line break, right? It goes to the very top, and a lot of the time I don't see it leave. Or it gets back so quickly that it's not discernible by my human eye. That right there indicates to me the heavy recoil reduction of this compensator. Now, the benefits of having the dot never leave the window is not having to play the guessing game of when your dot's gonna come back. Not to say that's 100% true. If you're a good shooter, you're a good shooter. Your dot's gonna go back to where you're presenting the firearm. But a lot of people struggle with dots because when the dot leaves the window, getting that dot back in the window is usually the issue, right? When your dot never leaves the window, you track it through the recoil, you're target focused, and then the second that dot goes back on the target, which is significantly quicker than without a compensator, you're able to press another shot. Because of that, I consider this compensator phenomenal, okay? The Parker Mountain Machine Comp, the PMM, JTTC, whatever it's called, will be staying on this 43X. I am utterly pleased with it. I do recommend it if you do have a holster that's capable of fitting said, which I will get into in a moment, and if you do have the want for a more capable firearm. Now, the last or second to last topic of discussion is going to be holsters, right? The size of the firearm. I already spoke about before me turning this weapon into a more capable system. However, I wanted to discuss holster availability. With a 43X, if you are buying a PMM comp and putting it on said pistol, um, you wanna make sure that you buy a 48 holster or you probably message the manufacturer and make sure that it's compatible with a 43X holster because the bottom is open. Most holster manufacturers think like T-Rex. Um, their holster bottom will be open where the, where the barrel is, um, but some of them aren't. So you can't just order a 43X holster. You have to order a 48 or specifically request otherwise. Okay. Now, another topic of discussion in terms of form factor is the efficiency of the platform. Let's take a step back to the Roland Special. The Roland Special concept started because we had X300s on our Glock 19s, right? And then Senor Roland decided to put a comp on it, okay? He said, I don't want to get all this soot on my flashlight, this carbon on my flashlight, as well as I want to tame the platform as much as possible, okay? 
So then he added a magwell. Then he added a red dot. Then they added slide serrations, irons, triggers. It doesn't matter. That was the inception of the Roland build, though, is it said, we already have this flashlight sticking so far past the barrel. Why don't we add something to take up the extra space that's not being used? Because think about it. When you put it in your holster, if you don't have a comp on your 43X that has a TLR7 sub, guess what? You're just wasting space in front of the barrel. That's where compensators come in, okay? My TLR or my 43X, because it already had the TLR7 sub, now it more efficiently utilizes the space in front of the barrel. It does not make the holster selection difficult. It does not require more room. And I'd say that's probably one of the greatest benefits of the, the Roland build is the gun's already there, guys. There's already that empty space in front. Why not fill it up with something that's actually beneficial, okay? Same reason a lot of people put um, threaded barrels on their Glock 19s with X300s or TLR1s is they say, oh, well, it's not going to change anything. It'll just have an extra capability, right? Almost like a force multiplier in a way. Crazy how that works out. The last topic of discussion, and this is going to be a heavy one, that's going to be the price. <clears throat> Glock OEM barrels are great. You're not going to shoot out a Glock OEM barrel, at least for a very long time, and you're probably not a good enough shooter to outshoot a Glock OEM barrel. The Parker Mountain Machine Combo costs $360. I'm looking at it right now. I needed to take a second look just to make sure I wasn't crazy because that's a lot of money. Um, on top of that, the installation is pretty tedious. I actually sent mine to the company because last time I botched it on a P226. Um, I wanted to make sure it was installed correctly. So that's another 10, 20 bucks. The Parker Mountain Machine $360 barrel JTTC combo can only, it's, it's worth it in the eyes of the beholder. Do you have a 43X that you love shooting and you have some extra money on the side? Some, as they call, FU money, right? To just drop on upgrades that offer a little bit of a performance boost. If you do, I wholeheartedly recommend it, okay? If you have the money, if you're making some good coin, 360 bucks, you'll have a much better shooting experience. You'll have a better platform. I wholeheartedly recommend it if you have the money. However, if you are a college kid just getting into guns or you're working a maybe not the best paying job and you're just getting off the floor with firearms or you're just learning how to shoot firearms, $360 buys more than 1,000 rounds of 9mm. And what's more important, 1,200 rounds of 9mm down the pipe with proper training and a shot timer and really making yourself accountable or a Parker Mountain Machine comp. That's up to you guys. Um, but in my opinion, that 9mm is going to serve you a lot better. It's incredibly important that we get out and we train with our firearms, okay? If you're not out at the range training every couple weeks or month or two, at the very least, getting reps in with your self-defense firearm, throwing a $360 barrel inside of it is not going to change anything. We all need to train better, more efficiently. We need to strive to do better. That's probably the biggest attractor with this comp is it is freaking expensive. A lot of PMM shit is expensive, okay? But in my opinion, it's worth it as long as you put in the work. All right. Those are my thoughts on the PMM, Micro, JTTC, and Barrel Combo for Glock 43, 43X, 48 with Mushi, or however you pronounce that. Um, it's a great device, guys. But like I said, get that training in. Make sure you install it properly. Send it over to PMM if you do want them to do it because um, we're shooters, right? We're not engineers here. That shit was so confusing to try to put on the first time. Um, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Comment down below if you have any further questions. Peace.